Right, let's tie all of this together with Rami Khouri, who is a journalism professor at the American University of Beirut, a friend of Jamal Khashoggi as well. He's on Skype from Boston today. Hi, Rami. So, uh, as I was saying to Rosalind Jordan a little bit earlier, if we just look at the intelligence side of things, first of all, this shouldn't be an issue. A president should believe his or her intelligence uh, community, and yet that may be the sticking point here, right, that Donald Trump doesn't want to take them at their word or, or take this particular word. There's really several issues, and that's one of them. The relationship between Trump and his various security agencies has been quite rocky. Um, the second one is the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia as a long-term strategic relationship. And the third one is the personal relationship between Trump and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and Mohammed bin Salman, which and other members of the royal family, which presumably has some private business implications, as many of Trump's relations do. So there's three or four different dimensions to this, but the idea, the fact that the CIA released this and leaked this information to several American news aid, news outfits is quite astounding because, first of all, it goes against what the president and the uh, uh, secretary of state and defense minister have been saying, and it goes against the, uh, the general way to do things in Washington, which you don't have the CIA leaking stuff to contradict your president. Mm. Most people will probably believe what the CIA has come to and not the Saudis, if for no other reason than the Saudi story has changed so many times uh, in the past four or five weeks. Um, if that is the case and uh, Donald Trump decides, no, I'm going to stay and support my allies in Saudi Arabia, what kind of effect could that have on, on his credibility, on the relationship between the countries? It depends on what the Congress does. It depends on what reaction you get from the private sector, business people in the U.S., and it depends on what reaction we get from governments all over the world. If the evidence is uh, given out to the public and clearly shows that Mohammed bin Salman and now his brother, allegedly, uh, were involved in this or even planned it, this means that you have uh, premeditated assassins um, running Saudi policy. If that's the case, then I think most governments around the world, except a few that depend on Saudi money to stay solvent, most uh, honorable governments around the world will, will have nothing to do with them and will start taking political, military, economic, military, not attacking, but, you know, defense contracts and stuff like that. People will want to distance themselves from premeditated assassins mm. uh, running Saudi Arabia, if that is proven to be the case, which isn't quite clear yet, but it seems to be moving in that direction. So there are huge, huge implications uh, of uh, what could happen. Uh, the Congress is the place to look right now, I would say, because they are starting to come up with legislation to, they've already come up with a bill against Bahrain, defense uh, relations, and maybe now with uh, Saudi Arabia. This is not only because the savage nature of this crime, the barbaric nature, and also because the Saudi government has 